I've never personally been with Quincy Jones, but are you? That was your girl, girl, boy, boy. Don't play with these toys. I'm in to be avoided. And I'm just glad to, to, you know, just have him in my life. He's a great, great leader. Great leader. Living legend. That's what we sitting in front of, right? Yeah. 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 Tevin Campbell seems to have confirmed Cat Williams' claims of how Ludacris was allegedly involved with Quincy Jones romantically. You see, earlier this month, Ludacris became one of Cat Williams' targets during his viral interview on Shannon Sharp's Club Shay Shay podcast. Williams accused the Atlanta-based rapper of being part of the Illuminati secret society and having an ugly-faced wife. So there was a crossroads where we were both invited to an Illuminati thing, Williams shared. It had to be one or the other of us, and decisions had to be made. So it was both of us. We were equal. One of us had to cut off all their hair and couldn't do the sideburn thing no more with the points. And the next person they said was going to get $200 million because they were going to pay him $10 million a movie to do 20 movies. And that's how the conversation happened. One of those persons turned out to be Ludacris, and the other person turned out to be Cat Williams. Luda hit back at the Primetime Emmy Award winner with a freestyle over Kanye West's Devil in a New Dress beat. He denied being in the Illuminati. In response, Cat Williams took time during his conversation with Suge Knight to preview a diss track directed at the Fast and Furious star. In real life, I'm fast and furious. In real life, and you buy curious, rapped Williams. The creator of the World War III comedy special also said, Ludicrous, you must be out your rabbit a mind. Made a rap song, but N, you ain't say I'm effing lying. Later in the verse, Cat Williams suggested Ludacris had S with a music industry icon. The 52-year-old Cincinnati native rapped, I've never personally been with Quincy Jones, but are you? That was your girl, girl, boy, boy. Don't play with these toys, I'm in to be avoided. Meanwhile, fans have commented on these allegations, with many claiming that there's some truth in Cat Williams' words. After that, 2016 Quincy Jones interview with Rolling Stone magazine, I realized that Quincy was Diddy before Diddy was Diddy, but Quincy was Diddy on steroids. I bet old boy had Luda hogtied and ball gagged, one fan commented. A second fan added, I keep hearing Quincy was doing a lot to young men in Hollywood. Now, Ludacris might not be the only artist who has faced the shady side of Quincy Jones. You see, in early 2018, Quincy Jones caused quite a stir online after he revealed he was biased. We heard, we had the city covered. We were baby gangsters. We had all the stores, working all the stores, steel boxes of honey, everything else. These revelations caused many internet users to flip the script and dig up perceived dirt on the legendary music producer. One of the long-standing rumors that made rounds after the Vulture piece gained traction was that the Grammy-winning artist essayed R&B singer Tevin Campbell when Campbell was still a minor. Campbell, whom Jones called an underrated musician in the Vulture interview, took to Twitter to address the rumors after they began to resurface. Now I'm trending, folks will really say some disgusting things, the Can We Talk singer said. Tevin was essayed by Quincy. Get the F out of here with the devil, he continued. Several laughing emojis accompanied the tweet. Elsewhere in the interview, Jones stated how the Beatles were the worst musicians in the world, that he dated Ivanka Trump years ago, and that Marlon Brando slept with other male entertainers such as James Baldwin and Richard Pryor. Tevin was once regarded as one of the best musical talents in the world, but having joined the industry as a minor, many people were out to take advantage of him, Quincy included. Campbell's follow-up collaboration would be with none other than Prince, when he was just 15, for the top 15 Billboard Hot 100 round and round, peaking at number 3 R&B. By 18, there were only three voices allowed to vamp out in both ad-libs and in keys higher than everyone else on 1994's Black Men United soul charity single, You Will Know, written by D'Angelo, and they were Stokely Williams, Brian McKnight, and an 18-year-old Tevin Campbell on a song that included everyone from Usher and Gerald Levert to El DeBarge and Lenny Kravitz. This was the level of company Tevin Campbell was not only keeping, but holding his own with, smiling confidently and shimmering with ingenue talent until everything fell apart. With a four and a half octave range, young Campbell was often referred to as the male Whitney Houston of his day by those who closely studied vocal technique. 
He had so clearly researched Houston's approach to the song, right down to her riffs, runs, and builds, that his Altino countertenor on Allen and Marilyn Bergman's 1992 Quincy Jones produced one song off of the official Olympics Barcelona Gold album, so completely followed the 1988 blueprint for one moment in time that one could be forgiven for believing the song was Whitney's, she would go on to perform it live repeatedly for presidents and in concert thereafter. Campbell would be called to slay Whitney's style again at age 20 on the 1996 Olympic album for The Impossible Dream. Of the five Grammy nominations he'd received before his 20th birthday, Campbell lost to the likes of Luther Vandross, Al Jarreau, Ray Charles, Babyface, and Peak Boy's Two Men. That's the level of artistic competition he was considered in the company of in 1991, 1993, and 1995, respectively. In addition to selling over 3 million albums during this run, did I also mention Campbell acted in sitcoms and cop shows alongside such talents as Will Smith and Brandy? Well, Will Smith is another person alleged to have been S.A.'d by Quincy. Benny walks me in and introduced me to Quincy and like, hey Q, what's up man? He's like, hey man, you know, I saw your music videos. I love, I love what you're doing. I love what you're doing. Tell me your rap name again. If you are new to this, then allow me to bring you up to speed. Quincy, Campbell, and Will Smith were all involved in a S chain revolving around the legendary music producer. A few months ago, celebrated actor Will Smith revealed that he lied to Quincy Jones about being able to act in order to get the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. The NBC sitcom ran for six seasons, from 1990 to 1996, providing the necessary boost Smith needed to get his film career going. With its humorous take on the fish-out-of-water trope and its incorporation of real-world events taking place within America at that time, The Fresh Prince stood out among its competitors. Ordering other people's lawyers around. <laughs> like, that's his lawyer, Quincy. Leave that man alone. Hey, Quincy. Fans of The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air may have been treated to plenty of behind-the-scenes stories during the 2021 reunion special, but Smith shared a little anecdote that not many people know about. In 2023, while speaking with CBS Mornings about his Fresh Prince days, the actor revealed that when the show's executive producer, Quincy Jones, asked him if he could act, he lied and said yes. At the time, Smith's entertainment industry experience had been restricted to performing as a rapper alongside DJ Jazzy Jeff. But as the veteran star explained, it's best to say yes when asked if you can do something, even if you can't. I think it's important, as a rule, if someone asks you if you can do something, always say yes, even if you can't. Quincy Jones wants to have an audition, right? And Michael Jackson was behind me, 48 million sold on Thriller, and Oprah was behind me on the other side, the color purple, and I'm sitting there and, you know, I look back at Michael and he was like, what are you gonna do, Will? And it was like, just in that moment, you know, Quincy was like, you're making a decision that's gonna affect the rest of your life. And I was like, let's do it. But it was also around the same time that Campbell was topping the charts with the help of Quincy, but of course a little favor to accompany the success. It is this kind of storied beginning that made Tevin Campbell fans go completely in on author and social influencer blogger Luvi Ajayi when she dared on August 16th, 2018, to say the following. Someone suggested Tevin Campbell sing at Aretha's tribute. Under what rock did they pull that name from? And it wasn't just everyday fans that dragged Lovey so hard following the quip that Tevin Campbell trended on Twitter for days thereafter. Celebrities chimed in too. Director Ava DuVernay, among others, all came roaring to the defense of Campbell, publicly stating that she'd be booking Campbell on a forthcoming episode of Queen Sugar just to learn about these disrespectful millennials. Reportedly, DuVernay has made good on that promise, and Campbell appeared on the show. For his part, Campbell, with the utmost of class, thanked his fans and, in the slyest bit of clapback, posted a picture of him young, bright, and beautiful, beaming with Aretha Franklin while subtly mentioning all the times he was in the Queen of Souls company, making the prospect of him publicly honoring her not so far-fetched in either talent or relationship. In any case, the period of 1993 to 1995 for Campbell was so lit that despite the hardships he went through, it might be hard to fathom today. He was the opening act for Janet Jackson's Janet Tour, which would be akin to opening for Beyonce's Lemonade Tour for this generation. He had three top five R&B hits in a row from his multi-platinum album, I'm Ready album, including another number one in Can We Talk. In fact, he'd have had two number one with I'm Ready, were it not for R. Kelly's 12-week run with Bump and Grind at the top. For his releases between the ages 14 to 16, Campbell was in studios recording with the likes of Prince, Babyface, Al B. Shore, Daryl Simmons, Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, and Narada Michael Walden, all R&B, pop, and soul royalty in the production game. 
Homophobia would also prove to be the undoing of Campbell, beginning with the styling for the first single for the video for his third album, 1996's Back to the World, the first to be executive produced by Campbell, and which featured production by Babyface, Stevie J, Jamie Jazz, Keith Crouch, Sean Puffy Combs, and Chucky Thompson. It only went gold after a run of pure platinum. By the time Campbell was arrested in 1999 at the age of 22 for soliciting Oral S from an undercover cop and followed it with a disastrous forced outing interview with Jamie Foster Brown in Sister to Sister magazine in 2003, Campbell's career as an A-lister had already come to a close. In any case, when you dive into Quincy Jones's star-studded history, rubbing elbows with the likes of Tevin Campbell and Will Smith, you can't help but wonder if Cat Williams might be onto something with his claims. Rumor has it that Ludacris could have potentially been part of Quincy's intriguing circle, but of course, it's all speculative at this point. Anyway, that's it for this video, folks. Bye.